Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to explain how to interpret the acid-base balance in a horse in a practical way. So I'm not going to bore you with calculations and equations. As introduction, you may know that there is an old way to interpret acid-base derangements that's based on the anderson hasselbach equation. That equation to calculate the pH. If the pH decreases below the normal range, we speak of acidemia. If the pH increases, we speak of alkalemia. However, there can be acid-base derangements even in absence of a change in pH. In such cases, we instead speak of acidosis and alkalosis. Based on the anderson hasselbach approach, the causes of acidosis and alkalosis can be respiratory or metabolic. Unfortunately, bodies are very smart, so if pH changes due to a disease, the other systems will try to compensate to bring back the pH within the normal range, so it can be difficult to find the cause of the alteration. As general rule, the primary mechanism of the derangement occurs always in the same direction of the pH. A compensatory mechanism will never bring the pH out of the normal range. So if we found acidemia, we have to look if the PCO2 is increased or if the bicarbonate is decreased to find the primary cause. The one that is altered in the opposite direction of the pH is probably a compensation. If both of them are altered in the same direction of the pH, then it's a mixed disorder. To outline metabolic alterations still based on this approach, we can calculate the anion gap. The principal problem of this approach is that bicarbonate is calculated from the pH and the PCO2, so it's always a secondary change. The advantage of relying on this method is that it's quick and easy, but the disadvantage is that it is more descriptive than mechanistic, because it fails to distinguish between dependent and independent variables. With the Stewart approach, variables are divided into dependent and independent. So while bicarbonate, hydrogen and hydroxide are dependent, PCO2, weak acids and strong ions are independent variables, so the primary responsible of acid-base alterations. Weak acids are principally plasma proteins and are indicated as A dot. Strong ions are electrolytes and other anions such as lactate, ketones, phosphates and sulfates. So based on this approach, we cannot include bicarbonate in the calculation for a metabolic alteration. And to calculate the strong ion difference, we have to include all the independent variables. Obviously, the advantage is that this method is more accurate and take into account much more substances. But in practice, many of the times we don't have all these values. So, in a simplified approach, we can just consider sodium, potassium and chloride that are the most abundant ions in plasma. Lactate can be added to chloride or considered apart. Now, let's see in horses which are the most common causes of respiratory or metabolic alterations. Starting with metabolic acidosis, one of the most common causes of acidosis is increased lactate that occurs with hypoperfusion, strenuous exercise, renal failure, rhabdomyolysis, pulmonary diseases and intoxications. A decrease in sodium is also quite common cause of acidosis in horses and occurs with diarrhea, sweating, blood loss, peritoneal or pleural effusions, bladder rupture, gastrointestinal diseases and renal tubular acidosis. Treatment for these types of disorders is fluid therapy with an alkalizing fluid, such as Ringer lactate. Quite uncommon is the hyperchloremic acidosis that can occur with renal tubular acidosis or is iatrogenic induced. 
Anyway, this case can be treated with administration of bicarbonate. Also less common, an increase of proteins that can occur with inflammation on neoplastic processes brings the pH down. And here you have the formula on how to calculate the expected value of the PCO2 for the compensatory mechanism. Metabolic alkalosis can be caused by a decrease in chloride that occurs with reflux or enteritis, rhabdomyolysis, exhausted horse syndrome and administration of horse in it. Treatment is still fluid therapy but with an acidizing fluid such as physiologic solution. Decreased proteins will also cause alkalosis as if you remember I said that they are weak acids. They decrease commonly with protein losing enteropathy or nephropathy or in case of effusions. Then treatment will be a plasma transfusion. Quite uncommon is an increase of sodium. And here again the formula for the expected respiratory compensation. Now let's see respiratory alterations. Acidosis is basically caused or by a reduced gas exchange or by hypoventilation that can have local or central causes. Anyway, all these mechanisms cause an increase of PCO2. Alkalosis is due to tachypnea that causes a decrease of PCO2 and can be due to all these mechanisms. Both in case of respiratory acidosis and alkalosis, this formula can help you to calculate the alteration of the base excess as compensatory metabolic response. Now take note, if you have to analyze blood gases of a horse, first of all look at the pH, if there is acidemia or alkalemia. Then look at the PCO2 to see if there is a respiratory alteration and if it is in the same direction of the pH or not. Then look at the base excess or bicarbonate for the metabolic component. Then look at electrolytes, protein and lactate to find out which is the primary cause of the altered pH. And finally, if you want, try to calculate the expected compensation. And here are all the notes together. If you need them, in the description of the video you can find the link when you can download the PDF so that you can bring these notes with you. I hope that this was clear. This is just a theoretical explanation and I think that for acid-base balance that is a quite complex mechanism, practical examples can be very useful. So don't miss the next video in which I have a special guest that will explain again acid-base status with some real cases. I don't give you much clues on who is this first guest of my channel, so that you will have just to wait and watch the next video. Thanks for watching, bye!